Good morning. Rhonda, before you sit down, do you mind ringing the bell? The bell doesn't show on the screen. Will you fix that for us for next week, Ken? <laughs> you can see it there, though. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, here on this cold uh, December morning, but the second Sunday of Advent. It's delightful to be together with you again. Let us stand and sing our welcome to the Holy Spirit song. And I think that I'm a little bit more coordinated this week. Are you seeing the right thing on the screen there in Zoom? I'm not seeing anything, I'm seeing black. Oh, Joan and Ralph, do you see the Holy Spirit? Welcome, Holy Spirit, they're welcome in this place. They just muted. No, them. we don't see anything. There it is. There it is. Yep. Now it is fine. Let's try it again. Are you seeing it now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's hope that that uh, works for us. together. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here into this place. We welcome you into our hearts. And we ask for you to have a divine exchange with us this morning as we gather to worship, not only in person here in the church and also on Zoom, but also as we worship in our hearts who you are and what you have done for us. Amen. You may be seated. This is the second Sunday of Advent, and we have this affirmation here on the screen. I will read that, and then there is a then there is a petition that will follow after that, and I'm going to invite you to read the petition together with me. When we make our affirmation, we are saying to God where our answers to our questions come from that perplex us. My God, in you only do I find the answer to the questions that perplex and confuse me. Yet I know that in your good time, the answer will be made to me. And here, if you would read with me the, the petition. Grant me grace, dear God, to live with my questions, 
until you are pleased to make my way clear. This affirmation and this petition reminds me of Israel, the people of God, and God's response to Mary when Gabriel came to give to her the answer that God had not only for her, but for all the people of Israel, which then, of course, was an answer for all people, as Jesus came not just for the Jews, but he came for all people. I would like to invite uh, anybody who would like to, to come up and light our second Advent candle. Ken, great. So light last week's candle first, and then pick another purple candle and light it as well. No, nope, doesn't matter. Just a purple one. That's terrific. Thank you. One of the themes that we often explore during the season of Advent is the theme of hope. And I was uh, working in my yard just a few weeks ago with my family, and we were cutting down the raspberry canes. We have quite a patch of raspberry canes, which I'm delighted to have, but it hadn't been cared for for many years. And so as a result, you couldn't tell where the more recent canes were, you know, with raspberries, you have to cut down all of the canes except for three of them at the end of each season. And then those three are the ones that are going to bring you raspberries next year. Well, we couldn't hardly tell right away where those were. There was so much overgrowth. And we took all of those canes and they made huge piles and we had a burning barrel. And my son helped me and we filled the burning barrel up to burn the old raspberry canes. Well, it took several hours actually to burn them. And when we were getting near the end, I, thought, I told my wife, I think it's only about 30 more minutes. I'm just going to stay here and I'm going to finish this. Well, 30 minutes stretched into another hour and a half. And then I decided I was going to leave it. And I watched the barrel and it looked like, you know, it was, it was all taken care of and I didn't need to worry about fire or something like that. And I went back inside. By this time, it was already dark. I came out the next morning when it was daylight, came back to the burning barrel, and it had been about this far from the top of the burning barrel when I left it. And now the top of it was more down here, but the burning barrel was still very warm. I was quite surprised. Of course, people who use burning barrels probably wouldn't have been surprised, but it was quite dense in there. I got the stick out that I'd been using the day before to try and help protect myself to make sure we didn't get any stuff falling out that might make dangerous flames. And I put it in and I poked it around and it didn't take too long. And all of a sudden some fire started to come up because there was enough warmth in there, but what it was lacking was oxygen. And once a little bit of oxygen got stirred in with that heat, it started it back in flame again. My wife has written something on Facebook that I wanna read a paragraph from to you about this concept of hope and about oxygen. Hope is built into the human spirit, like the flame that lights a candle and dances with the oxygen it breaks down. So long as you can breathe, there is hope. It will stay alive despite the worst of journeys, the biggest of losses. But it may start its presence through the shadows of tears. And that's okay. Tears have work to do in our lives. Honest sorrow is a gift. That idea that God has built hope into our spirits is something divine, that even when things seem bleak or dark, like they often do during Advent, when our nights are long and our days are short and it's dark, we still have hope. Hope is coming. When the people of Israel were in that dark period from the time of Nehemiah until the time of the coming of the Messiah, which was about 400 years, that's a long time to be in the dark, similar to the dark ages that we experienced in the last millennium. God was waiting for the perfect time. And I don't know why that happened to be the perfect time, but while they were waiting, they were waiting for God to come to them. They were waiting for a Messiah. 
So we're going to stand and sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. There are four verses there. And I hope you can all see them in Zoom. Can't see anybody else, so I'm trusting you can. Yes, we can. Great. Are the words too small? Uh, no, there's a reflection from the window, and I'm just checking that everybody could, could see the. Should I put them lying down? I think we're okay. Wait, fine. Okay. Okay. The light is fine. Yep. Oops, that's not the right one. There we go. 245. Today, when we look at what scripture has to say, we're going to look at Mary's song. Last week, we looked at Zechariah's song. And Mary's song was a song of great joy. She was surprised by incredible news. As you meet together in small groups in the areas where you are, you could share with each other a time when you've been surprised by great news. Maybe not to the extent that Mary was, but even small surprises can bring great joy into our hearts. 
And I'll let you do that for about seven minutes and I'll try and watch my watch for the people on Zoom and we'll see you shortly. I'm waiting for him to take his three chair off so we can see each other better. Why are you there? There yes. you are. Good morning. We can see you now. Wanda, you're muted. Oh, really? It doesn't. Sh Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. How are you doing, Ralph? Well, it's, it's yeah, it's livable. And uh, it's better than it was. Let me put it that way. I just hope that it'll keep. It, I, you know, it, it seems to improve, and I got to accept that. And I'm going to take some more uh, acupuncture. I think I felt I felt okay. that last one helped me. <clears throat> Dale and Kathleen, we're in our small group now. Morning. Um, are they there? Here and... Oh yeah, there you are. Yes. Yes. Looks like Wanda's got her paper out. She's looking to record her. <laughs> yes, I am happy to, although frankly, you all do a beautiful job as well. So and I, I did it last year or last weekend. If anybody else would like to do it today, happy for that as well. I don't think I can hold a pen. I just got back from my 15 kilometer bike ride and it's cold. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's something. So well his, done, back, his back is sweaty and his fingers are cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but isn't it icy? Sorry. I, I haven't noticed ice, you know. Uh, someone told me just let the air out of your tires until the point where they just before they would go flat if you went over a bump and you will have enough traction. And I've never had problems. I rode throughout the winter last year too. Well, good for you. <laughs> well, maybe that can be your surprise today that you were able to go out and ride and you knew what to do and how invigorating. Thank you. That's what I was going to say. How refreshing. Yes, that's right. That's what we should. Those are the adjectives refreshing, invigorating. <laughs> <clears throat> How's your health, Ralph? It's, uh, it's, you know, I guess it's uh, as long as I take the pain pills, and, you know, I can live with it. It's, um, it's, it's better than it was. Let me put it that way. Thank you for asking, and thank you for all the prayers that have been. Uh, administered. And do we have any particular prayer requests this week? I don't think we actually told Kathleen and Neil the question that Wes gave us. Was there a time in your life when you got news that was a surprise? And he's asked it because the topic today is Mary's um, song. I did that after she heard the news from the angel. So can you recall the time when you got a surprise announcement? Obviously not as stunning as her. But... Well, when our, our daughter Shayla was born, it was just a wonderful surprise to have a girl because the doctor said all along, I think you're going to have another son. We were so 
so happy to have a son. But when she was born, oh my goodness, I, it was such a lovely surprise. And, she, and she's been a blessing along with Darren all her life. I think they call that the million dollar family, having one, <laughs> being a, having the blessing of the boy and the girl. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, we call our family the two million dollar family. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Kind of like two boys and two girls. Yeah. 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 My and, and best surprise is that. didn't hear that. Go ahead, Joan. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I wanted to pray for the Winklers, uh, Evelyn and Daryl Winkler again. Uh, Evelyn has taken radiation treatments and she doesn't have to go back to the doctor till the end of the month. But my goodness, she has cancer in three, three places actually. And she was shoveling the walk and she fell and broke her elbow last year. And they can't fix that until the, um, like a, an aneurysm on her heart is fixed and then there, there's cancer. And Shayla took her to um, a nice market yesterday where there were lots of plants. She just grows such a lovely garden and keeps her yard. And she was so happy yesterday. So to pray that she can cope with this. And Daryl has Alzheimer's and she just, she just manages so well. All, all, all very well stated. <laughs> Joan couldn't agree with you more. And Elaine, I think you were gonna say something. Oh, I was gonna share that um, my sister managed to surprise me twice, 10 years apart actually by coming for my birthday and it was a big surprise that it wasn't an announcement. It was, you know, she, she was there. Um, and one of those was this year, which, you know, it was in the middle of all the questions of what we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do and who's allowed to come and who's not allowed to come. So we really didn't have to. Zoom, are you ready there? But she did come. <laughs> are you ready in Wonderful. Zoom? Uh, Dale and Kathleen didn't share any prayer requests yet, but maybe Christmas, both children are coming home and their partners first time in about 12 years. Pray that uh, we'll have a really blessed time and that uh, COVID won't knock it out because Michael and Jessica have to come from the Netherlands. They've got their tickets booked. Oh, nice. <laughs> that will be a delightful celebration. I must, must that, I guess that must have been your joy. <laughs> Surprise, yeah. Elaine, who is sharing for your group? I think Wanda. Shall I go ahead? Yes, please. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, Ralph is very grateful for feeling a little bit better. And again, he says, thank you very much to everybody for his prayer, for, for the prayers that you have provided to him. It's all, it, it, even just feeling a little bit better is always a step in the right direction. Um, and uh, Joan shared this lovely story of uh, her big surprise was when her second child was born after uh, Darren Darren was, of course, the first, a boy, and her doctor thought that the second would be a boy as well. So, of course, what a delight it was when Joan and Ralph realized they, they had Shayla, a beautiful little baby girl. And Joan is also asking us to pray for Evelyn and Daryl Winkler, of course. Um, fortunately, Evelyn has had some radiation treatments, so thrilled to hear about that. Um, and at the end of the month, she'll go back to see the doctor again. So let's pray for Evelyn that all goes as well as possible for her. And of course, let's pray for Daryl as well with his Alzheimer's and uh, that um, that Evelyn uh, can, can, uh, can do all she always tries to do as smoothly and easily as possible. Elaine was tremendously grateful for a, a, the two surprises 10 years apart when her sister came and joined her as a big surprise for her birthdays. So that was a real treat. And you heard Dale and Kathleen comment that for the first time in 12 years, um, her, both children are coming with their partners this Christmas. So that's a lot of blessings to be grateful for. Mm. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Wanda. Over here, is there somebody designated? Rhonda? Um, just a couple further requests. One is for, uh, we lost our aunt Ruth uh, last week, and um, we missed her. We connected her for like two days, and she had a great life and was healthy right up to the end. So, prayers for her family, her health, and her difficult time. And also, a prayer, and as well, Beth lost an aunt as well. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Uh, yeah. Okay, and over on this side, is there somebody that's going to share for your group? Yeah, I, I can share. Um, we, we just talked more about the, the joy that we had, and uh, we didn't really get on to prayer requests, but, you know, I'm very thankful for the weather, and, you know, we had such a beautiful day in November, and uh, mm -hmm. winter stayed off a little while, and I'm also very thankful that um, Ken is healing from mm -hmm. the place, so. I have one more prayer request to add as well. Uh, Lori Jameson's mom, Elaine, has gone into Peter Lougheed Hospital. She is feeling weak, uh, and they anticipate that she'll be in the hospital for about a week to try and regain her strength so we can pray for her as well. Let's pray together as a community. Heavenly Father, thank you that when darkness comes, that we know that there will be light on the horizon. We're not always sure when that will be, but your creative power has demonstrated over and over again that after a night, day comes. After winter, spring comes. After darkness amongst your people, the Messiah comes. We are a people who must hang on to hope. We must believe, Lord, when our strength falters and when our faith stumbles, I pray that your spirit and your angels would be around us, gathering us and lifting us up and helping us make those steps and infusing us with your hope. Thank you for the surprises that we have to look forward to for the celebrations that are coming, for children that will return home to celebrate together, like for Dale and Kathleen, for mothers who will come back from the hospital, for husbands who are healing, for both Ken and for Ralph, Lord, we pray for strength for their bodies and healing for them. For a medical system that provides some relief for disease and illness, for Evelyn and Daryl, Lord, we pray for your healing hand to be on them and for you to make their bodies whole and strong. For families, Lord, who have said goodbye to relatives, to mothers and aunts, we pray that you would be with them. For Rhonda's family, in the passing of Aunt Ruth, for Beth's family in the passing of Aunt Evelyn. Lord, give them strength and comfort. Help them to remember the many seasons of joy that they experienced together. We pray, Father, for Keith's mom, Marilyn. We pray that you would strengthen her heart, that you would lift her spirits, that you would remind her, Lord, of who you are and what you are capable of doing. And we pray this also for this cousin of Lindsay's husband, this child, 11 years old, and experiencing cancer for the second time. We pray, Lord, that in what seems like a very bleak 
and dark place, that you would bring hope, that you would stir up the oxygen in our spirit, and that healing would come to this body. Do your creative work, Lord, and heal this child from disease. We pray, Lord, that as we encounter difficulties, challenges, and things that upset us in our society, in our routines, in our families, Lord, that we would stand firm on you and that our hope and our grounding would come from you, not from our bank accounts or our houses or even our families, but that our hope, Lord, would be based in you, the one who brings hope in dark times, and the one whose word is always fulfilled. Fill us this day with your hope, and may we be able to give that hope to others that are around us that are in dark places. May we be like a candle and spread the flame and the light of your goodness to those with whom we touch and interact. And may the light that you give us grow brighter as we bring our candles together and as we hope together in you, our sure hope. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand with me. And for the people on Zoom, I'm going to Try and share the PowerPoint again, and we will read together our mission statement. Let's read together. I am a child of God. Therefore, I am somebody. The power of Christ is within me. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to take my microphone off again and go to the piano to play our offertory song. Is there somebody that would like, Rhonda, you're going to come and I know that many people give online, so there's no, no worries, no pressure. Thank you so much for all that you do for Dale Mead. see the words. Oh, I didn't even have them there. Anyways, sorry. My apologies. But it's working better this week, isn't it? Yes. I made it simpler. Okay. Last week, I read for you an Advent poem. And this is the book of poems that I recently published from my uncle. Uh, and I'd like to share another one with you. Uh, I was reflecting with my mother as we were reading some of these poems separately that um, even though his poems were written many years ago, it seems that the same difficulties or the same troubles that he was observing and wrote about and reflected about, we still experience now. And it might not be exactly the same problem, but when he describes it, it sounds like we're living in the same time as what he's writing. And I think this is part of just the human condition that we are in desperate need of God's help and his strength. This one is titled, And Still Comes. December, such uncertainty. The old reliability around about that seems gone and lost as if some hard November frost had ended life and trust in men. 
desertified, made alien. And even where good sense prevails, by margins minuscule, avails such narrowness to healed divide. Search the familiar, what abides. What fruitful land has not been sold and Midas style turned into gold? We yearn for something that remains and constant value still retains. Behold the Christmas mystery. They tell us where eternity come down among us, chose to dwell in human form, Emmanuel. Ah, but we fixed that very fast. Hung on a cross, he breathed his last. But no, we lost the power to heal. He comes, the everlasting will, undoes the darkness of the hour. Come, Lord, your love is peace and power. Venite, which of course is the Latin word for come. On Thursday night, uh, Elaine agreed to read scripture this week, and I didn't communicate her from then until now. So I've got the passage here. Please come and read for us. This here for you. Come up and move the screen. I'll move my other book here. And I didn't write down the. Oops, yeah, right there. 25 to 50, or 26 to 55. It's quite long, but it's very interesting. I want to get a microphone. Just clip it onto your vest. Oh, Perfect. Reading from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 55. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. 26 starts here. 26, yes. not 21. Did I write down 21? Nope, 26. Sorry about that. Yes, because we read about Zechariah last, yeah. <laughs> last. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Mary visits Elizabeth. 
At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb, in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And this is Mary's song. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised our ancestors. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Can I take your microphone off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Put my mask on. I think that when it comes to Christmas time, Advent, and the Nativity, the image that we might conjure up of Gabriel coming to Mary is probably the second most common image that's shared amongst people. The first, of course, being the image of the Nativity like we have down here under the television screen on that um, wall hanging. And the angel coming to Mary is an image that has been used in art for centuries since, of course, the time of the Annunciation. I was searching for some images and I thought I would share some with you because there's so much richness that we can draw from art. Of course, they're used in different traditions. So some of them might seem strange or foreign to us. We don't have to accept what other people think is helpful for them in understanding something about God and Mary and Gabriel, but sometimes these images can help us understand something new that we haven't seen before. So here is a typical sort of picture where you see two beings, both with halos around them, one with wings, it's just obviously the angel Gabriel, and Mary, the other person also with a halo around her. This is another one. Sorry, Elaine. Can you stop, Sharon, and start again? Because all we're seeing are the words to O come, O come, Emmanuel. Oh, that's not good. Yes, of course. Just need to find my cursor. Elaine, I made you host. Is there any way that you can share or to stop my force stop my share? Yes, I can do that. Now you should be able to start share. Yeah. That 
That's good, we can see it. Great, thank you. So here's another picture of the Annunciation and you can even see it's written on there. This is likely a fresco inside of a church or it's used as an icon. And many of these icons are also used in both Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Christianity, which are roots of where our faith has come from. Here's another picture, which shows a very Western concept. Mary and the angel, of course, are both white. I don't think that Mary was white because she came from Jewish background. I would have expected her hair would be much darker than that and her skin would be darker. And I don't necessarily believe that angels are white other than the fact that they exhibit a white appearance from the brightness of the glory that they bring with them. And so sometimes the art and the images that we have are very much influenced by our culture and our context. Here, this is again influenced by culture and context. And you can see this is obviously an icon figure because the, the image itself, the whole image is a metallic uh, piece and then the faces are what is more lifelike. And here we have some more. This one gives a very different concept of what might be, somebody might be feeling in this picture. And this is a very Eastern concept, likely from Persia or from India. But again, the Virgin and the coming of the angel to make an announcement. Here is a mosaic that's done on the inside of a church. And you can even see Jesus pictured above and the dove that's coming down to Mary as an image of the conception of the Messiah in Mary through the Holy Spirit. This is a much more modern concept and expresses, again, the feeling that Mary might have experienced, joy. This is a very modern concept, again, very influenced by culture. But you have the impression here that Mary is a young girl, which she likely was. And you see a little bit more of the innocence rather than the conception that we might have in our minds that Mary was this older woman who seemed to have it all together and she lived in this beautiful house and the angel Gabriel came with this wonderful announcement. This one seems a little bit more realistic to me of what Mary's situation might have been. Notice that she's sitting here on the floor. I think this is actually after the birth because it seems that there is a baby there. There's a halo above what appears to be a bundle on the mattress beside her. This is, of course, a very, um, I don't even know how to describe this image, but, but the colors and the things that it might evoke in you might be more feelings directed to how you respond to this kind of an image. But here you can actually see what seems to be the angel supporting Mary. And it makes you think, what would this word have meant for Mary as she received it? Was she capable of receiving this news? We have so many images already or thoughts about how it must have been. And I don't know that any of them are right. And sometimes the images help us think about ways that it could have been. This is one that I dwelt on for quite a long time because I actually have, uh, I, I love the images like this and the, which were also illustrated in the Good News Bible where you don't actually see people's faces. Uh, and it helps you imagine a little bit more of the scenario. And again, the house here seems to be very plain and the angel is barely represented there on the left with that white image, the lines going up and down, something coming to Mary and making an announcement. The angel comes to Mary in the Annunciation and makes an announcement to her, which is really very astonishing. I don't know how Mary must have kept it together. And I imagine she probably sat there in silence or in shock for quite a while. And the angel needed to reassure her. He's announcing to her 
the coming of Jesus, the Son of God, to Mary. Who was Mary? Who was this person? She was a young girl. She came from a simple family. She came from the city of Nazareth, not a place of any importance, not a place that anybody was expecting that something good would come out of. And scripture even tells us at one point that the people remarked, could anything good come out of Nazareth? So it's not like she came from the big city. It's not like she was in Toronto or Vancouver or Montreal or even Calgary. She came from a place that didn't have a good reputation. She came from a family that wasn't very remarkable. She wasn't married. And now the fact that she was going to have a baby meant that people were going to think even worse things of her. Mary was in a very strange situation. The angel says to her, greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. I put the Greek there just to remind me that I'm going to tell you these things. Those are my notes. But you can maybe see that in the first line, which is translated as greetings, and I've made the colors the same so that you can see the Greek words and how they translate into English. That first word, kyre, is a little bit embedded into the second word. You can see in the second word, it's K-E-X. And then the X there begins that same root of the kyre, which is the greetings. One of the experiences that we've had now in religious life and religious expression is that these words from the angel have been turned into song. And it's not just song, but it's also something in football. A Hail Mary. Have you ever heard of a Hail Mary? That's what's happening here. That's how this word greetings is sometimes translated. What does hail actually mean? Well, you can hail a taxi, right? You're trying to get the taxi. Greetings and hail are the same sort of idea. You're trying to get somebody's attention, and you're trying to do it with a good intent, not evil, but good. And a Hail Mary here is the words that people have taken out of part of this, and now they offer it sometimes as prayers to Mary instead of prayers to Jesus. But it's the same concept here. It's the message that the angel gives to Mary that she is favored that the Lord is with her, and that she is blessed among women. And some people have believed because she is blessed, if I can pray to Mary with this Hail Mary, she will help me, she will intercede on my behalf. And actually, the message that the angel was giving is because of what was about to happen, we no longer needed an intercessor. That the intercessor himself, God, was coming to earth, and Mary was blessed because she was going to be the one to carry him in her womb. And so I put this together with a picture of the angel supporting Mary with the idea that something miraculous has, that has never happened and will never happen again is about to happen to Mary because God is choosing her as a vessel to be able to do something that will benefit all of mankind. But that next word, which is translated into English as favored woman, comes from that Greek word in purple, ke karitomene. And I looked it up in the concordance, and that's why I've got down there Ephesians 1, 5 to 7, because this particular form of that word only happens three times in all of Scripture. Two of them, in this passage in Luke, where the angel talks to Mary and tells her that she is blessed. But then Mary also repeats that later on in her own song when she explains that she is blessed. And then we see this form of the word again in Ephesians 1, 5 to 7, which I want to read to you. This is the beginning of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, and he's describing who we are as believers in Christ. He predestined us to be adopted through Jesus Christ for himself, according to his favor and will, 
to the praise of the glo- of his glorious grace that he favored us with in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. The word is embedded in verse 6, where it says, to the praise of his glorious grace that he favored us with in the beloved. It's that favor, and it's the same thing here, that Mary is a favored woman, but we also, who are in Christ, are favored by God. Mary wasn't favored because she had done something so wonderful that God was looking down and said, oh, I'm looking at all my people. Oh, there's Mary. Oh, what a good girl she is. I'm going to choose Mary. That wasn't what it was. Mary was favored because God placed his favor on her. God did it. He's the one that made Mary favored, not because Mary did something wonderful. But the miracle of it is that after the result of Christ coming, and then as I read on the poem, he hung on the cross, and then the power of the hill was defeated because he rose from the dead, enables all of us to also receive the same favor that Mary received by God coming to be inside of her. Because this is precisely what God chooses to do for each of us. He favors us, and he chooses to come inside of us. And we can rejoice because we, as Paul has written, are favored as much as Mary was by God coming to be inside of us. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And then the angel needed to tell Mary not to be afraid. And that's why I've used this image of the Annunciation, because I can imagine Mary must have experienced some fear. I'm sure that they weren't having little gatherings of 17 and 18-year-old little girls in Nazareth, where they had their social clubs, and they all talked about when the angel came to them. That's not a part of their social clubs. That's not in their treehouse. That's not what they talk about behind the garden shed. This is a one-time singular experience that Mary had. And I'm sure she must have been filled with fear. And the angel reassures her and promises her these magnificent magnificent things, that she's going to give birth to a son, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And Mary's response was what I talked about last week, Zechariah's response wasn't. That Mary responded in a way to say, I am the Lord's servant. The word that's used here is doule, which is the feminine form of doulos, which in Greek means servant or slave. It's a female bond servant. It's found in those three verses. In Luke 1, which we've just read, again in Luke 1, so twice, Like the one of Mary being favored, it happens twice in that passage, and only one other time in Scripture, and that's in Acts chapter 2, verse 18, where there is a sermon that is being spoken by Peter, and he refers back to a prophecy in the book of Joel, where it says, I will even pour out my spirit on my male and female slaves in those days, and they will prophesy. I don't really love the word servant or slave here because we have so many negative connotations to those words in our society. But it's more like the person who hears the instructions that are given to them by their superior, their supervisor, their manager, and they just say, yes, with gladness, I will do this. This is the kind of bondservant that Mary is. She is obedient to what she is asked. But the same concept, again, is something that Joel in prophecy talks about, is for all of us too, that it's not just Mary who will be a servant responding to God in obedience, but it also applies to each of us. And this is Mary's song which Elaine has already read for us. 
I only want to focus on one verse from Mary's song. And it's the fourth one down on the left column that reads, his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. I had an opportunity to visit Lori's mommy Lane this last week at Prince of Peace home. And for anyone who is going through that process of preparing for a journey that they've never had before from this life into the next, I'm sure there can be an element of fear that they encounter like Mary did. And I read this for Elaine Winter so that she would know what Mary's song was, but also what's contained within Mary's song. I really wonder how was it that the Holy Spirit made it possible for her to sing this song that has these incredible ideas and concepts in it? Did Mary sing it right away when she was visiting Elizabeth? Did she think about it for several days beforehand? Because this song came out when she was at Elizabeth's home and Elizabeth also told her she was a favored woman and all generations would look at her and know that she was blessed. But this concept in the fourth section down, his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation, is something that each of us can grasp a hold of. And it is essentially the message of what the nativity is about. It's about God's mercy coming to us, and that God's mercy is available regardless of what time you live in, regardless of the circumstances that are around you, regardless of the stresses of your life, regardless of the injustices that you might be facing, regardless of the troubles that you have getting out of bed in the morning, that God's mercy will come to you. And in the English, it's been translated, those who fear him. And in scripture, the word fear and awe are the same. So sometimes that word should be translated as awe, and sometimes it should be translated as fear. And I think sometimes when it's translated as fear, we miss part of what the message is. Because like the angels who always say to people when they come to them, do not fear, God also does not want us to be afraid. Part of the message of the nativity is God taking away our fear and God enabling us because of the power of who Jesus is, that God himself has come to be with us in our circumstance, wherever it is. He is Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is present. And the favor that the angel speaks to Mary comes to us also. When we put God in the place that he deserves, when we give him the awe and the praise and the glory that his position commands, then he extends his mercy to us. Notice that there's no other riders on that. There's no other liability clauses. There's nothing that says, oh, by the way, we might change these terms and conditions anytime we want to, and we'll just let you know. God doesn't say that. God says, I will do this. And at the end, it says that his word is performed. God does what he says he's going to do. And he extends his mercy to each one of us. Uh, that message came to us most directly through Gabriel and Mary in the gift of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may we, like Mary, glorify you from our soul and rejoice in you, our Savior. You indeed, God, have been mindful of the humble state of your people, your servants. Thank you for the mercy that you give to us and the hope that we have. I pray that you would stir in each of our spirits the hope that brings up the oxygen to bring flame to our hearts 
and that whatever circumstance we find ourselves in, we know that your presence is with us. Amen. May you leave from this building with the truth, the knowledge, the firm assurance that God is your hope and he will continue to give you hope and he will extend his mercy to you as he promised us through Mary. Amen. I have uh, two announcements that I want to share with you before I ask Wanda if she's got some other announcements as well. Uh, the first is that um, um, with God's grace, uh, hopefully in the month of March, I plan to make a trip to northern Iraq to continue distributing eyeglasses to refugees there. So I've made some tentative plans and I've begun to put my word out to people to see if there are those who would like to support that trip. Uh, and there will be a page that I will put a link to on our website, where you can see photos from the last distribution trip, eyeglass distribution trip, and a link if you want to participate in supporting that. The second announcement is that our Christmas services will be on Christmas Eve at 3.30 and at 5 o'clock. We're having two services to make sure that we can safely accommodate people in here with uh, health restrictions, and we hope to have a bonfire in between those services. Wanda, do you have any other announcements that you want to share with us? Oh, yes. Okay. So please email Rhonda which service you would like to attend. Rhonda, I will be at both services. <laughs> uh, and then she can make sure that we're safe here. Wanda, are you there? Yes. Thank heavens you'll be at both services because otherwise Rhonda might have to take one of them. So who knows where that would go to. I am uh, very grateful, Wes, for your service today. You've given us lots of interesting things to think about during the Christmas season. And also thanks so much to Elaine McKinnon for her beautiful reading as well. Other than that, no announcements, but a very Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, Elaine, as well for hosting on Zoom and helping things go well and keeping me on top of who's seen what and what we're not seeing when we should. Have a wonderful week. And thank you so much for joining us today. The Lord bless you. Elaine? Uh, on the bulletin board, you'll see a new picture. And I didn't put all the names so people, but it's our Christian choir. We used to have a very big Christmas choir. And uh, you can't see her face, but it's Ellie sitting at the piano. Oh. And uh, in the picture is uh, Ruth Siemens, Mildred Potter, Mickey Cool are the three that uh, are gone mm. from our congregation. Wow. And, and others, uh, Richie, Richie Hayward is the pastor and he's singing at one end with the choir and his wife, uh, uh, Beth, Beth, thank you. I was just talking to her last night, but Beth Hayward is in the front row as well. So uh, I, I will add names the bottom so you can but uh different ones i think uh wendy nicholson is also in the choir and uh my daughter-in-law bev i can't see her face but she's the back of the anyway it, it would be more interesting for you if i posted the names mm -hmm. have a look at the picture that's great it shows what uh the front of our church was like when there was a actually a rail a little, oh. remember that the rail all across uh, just at the front before you step down. Right. And we had poncettas all along that. It was beautiful. With, and this is beautiful as well. Just notice the change. Yeah. Thank you, Elaine. If you can still hear me on Zoom, Elaine was just telling us about a photo that she's posted on the bulletin board of the previous church choir. And she will put names on there as well. So when you come to the church, you can see an older picture of the church choir during Christmas time when Richie and 
when Richie Hayward was the pastor here. And Ellie, Ellie, and Ellie was on the piano. That was the important point. So I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a picture of that photo because I was hoping to put something up on the website, on the church's website to as a tribute to Ellie. So if anybody has any memories that they want to share, please send those to me as well and I'll put them on the website. Thank you. Thank you. 